Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint some artisan coffee mugs with little hearts in them. It's going to be a lot of fun, I think. I'm going to show you step by step how to do it from start to finish. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man in chat today, so you can ask questions in chat and I'll try to answer them. Let's get started. Alrighty, so I'm using a 9 by 12 inch canvas today. This is the Fredericks Mixed Media Canvas Boards. They're kind of a new product for them, but um, they've got a nice hard core so they don't warp. Really like them, and they're very porous. They uh, actually can work for watercolors as well. Um, we're using acrylics, obviously, so, but I sprayed it with water, and then I coated it with a gray. I just mixed my own gray with um, Prussian blue and burnt umber and white so pretty much equal parts of all three and then just spread it around here on the canvas so that's what's on our background um, really any gray will work it'll just kind of give us a head start on our painting to have some gray in the background um, let's go over colors really quick I've got carbon black burnt umber burnt sienna yellow oxide quinacridone burnt orange Thalo Green Blue Shade. You could use Yellow Shade if you don't have the Blue Shade. Um, cobalt Teal. And this is Prussian Blue. And Unbleached Titanium, Titanium White. And some Zinc White. And this is Glazing Liquid. Difference between the Titanium White and Zinc White. I get that question a lot. Zinc White is just a little bit more transparent. We're only going to be using it in a few spots. If you don't have it, don't worry. You can just use the, the Titanium White and just thin it down a little bit. Um, also, with Prussian Blue, you can mix Prussian Blue with Ultramarine Blue and Black. Um, plus a little bit of purple, maybe. Um, so it's just got a little bit of, um, of a purplish blue undertone. Um, all right. So that's, I think that'll be good to start there. Let me get, go over our brushes. We're going to be using Princeton brushes. They are our brush sponsor. So thank you to them. Thank you to Fredericks, our canvas sponsor also. Um, I have links down in the description to everything that we be, will be using. So you can check those out if you want to purchase them. But um, our main brushes, I think that we'll be using are most are the going to be the blenders. Um, we're going to be using those a lot in our coffee mugs. And then I've just got a few other brushes of different sizes, some small round um, liner angle brushes. And um, these ones in the long handles are their 6100 Summit series. And the red handles are their velvet touch lines. So I'll mention the brushes as I use them. Um, I'm not going to go over them all right now, but um, we'll hopefully I'll remember to do that. Mark will have to probably remind me. <laughs> get, I get going and I forget that I said I was going to do that. All right. So welcome. Yes. Glad to have you guys joining us for Saturday. Yes, it's actually really nice outside, so I don't blame you if you're if you're in the garden and watching this later. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> we may have wanted to be there ourselves. Exactly. <laughs> like, uh, no, I, I I've been looking forward to painting this for months actually. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm glad to. We were supposed to paint this before Valentine's Day and didn't get around to it. All right, so for our background, I think I'm going to go ahead and mix together a little bit more of our gray, and then we'll just use a lighter version of the gray um, that's our background color for um, just to kind of fill in around the mugs and make it a little bit lighter. So I'm going to scoop up. Actually, I think I'm going to use my palette knife to mix it. It will save my, my brush from getting super dirty. So I'm going to get pretty much equal parts of phthalo, or I'm sorry, Prussian blue, I'll probably call that phthalo blue a lot today, so I apologize ahead of time. I'm going to put out some extra here. It's actually, if you look on the back, it says it's phthalo blue red shade, um, which is very similar to ultramarine blue. So that's why I said ultramarine blue. But if you happen to have phthalo blue red shade, um, you could use that as well to mix this up. Um, bone black, bone black instead of carbon black. Carbon black is the one we're using today. Bone black has got a little bit more brown tone, just slightly. So I don't know. I've I've got probably three or four different Prussian blues, and they're all different. <laughs> there is a mixed color, so every brand has its own formula for making it, and um, they're all a little bit different. So basically, you're just 
making a really, really dark blue. So having that little bit of black in there just helps. That'll be for this mug here that we're, we're going to be doing. So mixing that up. Burnt Umber, Prussian Blue. I usually use Ultramarine Blue for this mixture. So this one's going to be even darker than the gray that we normally make with Ultramarine Blue because it's got black in it already. Or it's got black added to it, you know. So, oh, I like that. I'm scraping through. You can actually see that it's got a little bit of a blue tone. That's kind of what I want. So I wanted a little bit more on the blue side than the, than the brown side. And then I'm going to scrape up a little bit of white here. I'm not going to really mix a whole lot of this in the lighter gray because I pretty much want to use it mostly the dark color here in our shadow too. So that's really pretty in that. I need to use this Prussian blue more often for mixing colors. I kind of limited my palette today. I I was thinking of, you know, I mean, I could have had Prussian I could have had ultramarine blue and and doxazine purple in my palette and then just mixed this color, but I figured I already had, you know, a color that was basically that. Um, so just saving time. Plus, it'll be interesting to see what Prussian blue does in our mixtures, I think, today. It's kind of an experiment, at least for me. All right. I know. Mark's laughing at me. No, I'm I'm laughing with you. <laughs> Don't. Mm, okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm making a medium gray here. I already had that color added a little bit more white to it. And then I've got a lot more white over on this one here. And this one's going to be yeah, very similar to what we've got in our tone in our color there so you could really use any color though that you wanted to so if you wanted to make your background a different color than the photograph by all means do it and I'm just going to I've got a eight bright here just a large flat doesn't really matter the size mainly just a brush big enough to kind of fill the space easily and um, one we 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 started on um, my Patreon video this week the for the $10 level folks, and I'm painting on a quite larger canvas, not super large because I can't get a really large canvas on on film. It, it doesn't fit on my camera. But um, one thing we talked about was just sizing up. So if you were doing this on a really large canvas, you just use a larger brush. That's the main Thing. And you want a brush that's big enough to fill your space easily um, while still controlling it and getting your details in. So I am leaving just a little bit of this darker gray around the sides of the mug, um, just kind of feathering it in and just doing it very lightly. And I'm leaving it kind of sketchy um, or kind of painterly, you know, letting the brush strokes show. That's kind of the going to be the way I'm going to approach this painting is have it be a little bit more impressionist style or, you know, kind of looser style. So expressionist or whatever. I don't know. There's different ways of saying it, but. Did you just do air quotes? <laughs> I did. I said, I kind of went like that. I wasn't, oh, doing, okay. I wasn't doing air quotes, but yes. Like, kind of like air pats. <laughs> air pats. <laughs> yes. It was kind of like that. Oh, don't forget your little part in the middle of your mug handle too. I, I'm going to have to come back to that because I had too much paint. So the reason I didn't go right here with this was because it was way too thick, uh, too thick with paint. I want this to be kind of thinned out a little bit. Um, so I'm going to paint around here, but I want to have it kind of fuzzy. So I'm just getting it to where I have very little paint on my brush and then pulling that in towards those dark areas so that, and I, it looks like I have a lot of paint on here, but the actual part that I'm actually painting with doesn't, it's, it's not touching that thick paint. If I wanted to get to the thick paint, I could kind of really press down and there's lots of paint still in there. So. I can do this 
part up here with that. There was more in there than I thought. So it kind of, the shadows kind of start right in here. You can go around the side of the side of the mug some and then we'll add some shadow back in but it'll just help us not to have to cover over this really bright white or light gray color but you see how that dark color is showing through that's what we want it, that's what gives it that model look that that kind of um, textured look it almost almost like marble but not quite We do it a little bit smoother for marble, but it'd be an interesting lesson. We should do a whole lesson on faux finishes. How you doing? Hunter? I'm doing good. So somebody has a question. Okay. They were wondering, would it be easier to do the background first? So I'm assuming meaning the part the that you're thing. painting right now. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you could do the whole thing and not paint around the mugs. That, that'd that be fine. Yeah. But would I you think. get the same effect because you don't have as deep of a gray color? Um, well, I mean, I would I would definitely do the gray underneath for sure first. So okay. I wouldn't just do this light color. I would do the gray underneath and do it the whole thing the same way. But then, you know, you could do the whole thing with this light gray. And then you you just have to go back in and add your shadow on top because you wouldn't have your shadow area left, you know, obviously. Okay. But. And then for me, uh, would it be easier for me to have somebody else paint it <laughs> so I don't have to do it? I did get a question this week, and you know, they were they were saying that they liked the video and everything, and wondered if you painted also, and that would, that, that would be a hard no. Well, but he has I have painted it, it a couple twice. times. I stepped in. I was a more than adequate substitute for a bonus video. <laughs> and it was at that Why point. Why did we have you do that? And, I don't even remember. And it was at that point that I realized I shouldn't overshadow you on your channel. So <laughs> I pulled back. And I realized that your job is a lot harder than it seems when you're sitting in my chair. Yeah, we have. <laughs> <laughs> and new respect for each other's positions in this a, whole grand scheme of things. Yeah, we did a Trading Places a couple of years ago in the Patreon bonus. It was a row houses, yeah. and it was taking longer than they expected. And it was at the time you were dealing with your tendonitis. Oh, my arm, that's right. And so we didn't want to leave it half finished or push it to the next That's month. Right. So I volunteered to paint it the next day or finish it. That's right. And I forgot about that. Okay. You know, I kicked butt. Yeah, it was good. I even showed you know techniques. To Somebody use your won feet. it too. I, I don't know who has it, but I feel sorry. Well, no, I'm sorry. Okay, so it, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I, don't, well, I don't know you, what you I'm can, saying. You can say won it in air quotes for sure. <laughs> yeah, I won it. <laughs> Okay, so I went went in and did these, the inside of the uh, mug in the same kind of thinner style. That's what I was saying before, you know, when I had just loaded my brush with paint and it was really super thick with paint. Uh, if I had gone straight into this little area in here, then you would end up with a really bright uh light gray in this area that was almost solid and everything else would be this kind of painted you know thinner painted so that's why I kind of um waited until my brush didn't have as much paint in it to do these areas so I have very little paint in there when I did those so that they matched this outside area here I'm really liking the look of this though I think it's it's a fun technique and um it, you know it's it's going to look different than mine so just kind of Embrace that. If you use a different brush, it'll, you know, do different brush strokes. It might be a little bit more, I don't know, just different. Yeah, somebody actually asked about could they use an aspen brush? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. An aspen brush will give it even more texture. And you might do a couple layers, you know. And, and it depends on how dark you want this background to be. You know, you could do it a little bit brighter. You could do it with yellows. You could do, I would say, pick a colors. Like if you're changing the background of your painting, say, I would not pick a blue or a color that we're not already using. 
then it might clash. So to make sure that whatever you're going to do here is going to match our mugs, um, pick colors that are already being used. So, and the same thing with our mugs, like you could change the colors of your mugs, just make sure that your background colors are colors that are going to go together and make sure that you're picking colors that are pleasing um, and that work well together. So um, just kind of keep that in mind, I think. Uh, but a good rule of thumb is just, you know, when I'm choosing background colors is just to use the colors I've already got going on. I can mix them. I can create another color out of it. It doesn't have to be the same exact color as one of my mugs. You know, obviously I'm not using the Prussian blue back here, but I am using it in my mixture. Does that make sense? So that I know that it's going to go together with the rest of this because I'm going to be using this burnt umber a lot also. So both of these colors are going to be used. We automatically know that this gray is going to work. And that's another reason why I didn't just grab a gray that I already had pre-mixed or use my ultramarine blue for this and then not end up using ultramarine anywhere else in my painting because then it might look a little bit odd. It just might look a little bit off. It'd probably work because ultramarine blue is in Prussian blue, but it still, I think that this is a better solution. I don't know. Yeah. And, I, and plus I learned a new, that I have a new gray that I really like, so... I'll be using Prussian blue a lot more for this gray, <laughs> for grays. Angela's more favorite gray. Uh, I know. I know. More favorite or is, is that correct grammar? I don't know. I figure if Payne's got his own gray, then I should get a gray. You should. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> joking. <laughs> totally joking. Uh, I'm not. Don't leave me any comments. <laughs> no, I, I think you should. Uh, one time I I, I put uh, in my title, Bob Ross style, like, you know, just that like we were painting with acrylics in kind of sort of his style. Oh my gosh, I got so many mean comments. <laughs> <laughs> you are no Bob Ross. <laughs> Thank goodness. Like, I was not claiming that. <laughs> I'm really glad you're not. <laughs> Hi, this is my wife, Bob, <laughs> mother of my three children. <laughs> so, you know, so you're talking about colors going with each other. So uh -huh. that's what that color wheel is all about, is helping people understand what colors they should use and, and go complement each other. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, and I would say if you're using colors that are opposite on the color wheel then you need to use them in a way that is not too jarring. So say I wanted to use purple and yellow in my mugs, you know, and that that's, a, you know, like totally fine color combination. It's going to look really good, but I wouldn't use a bright yellow and a really bright purple. I mean, it, it's a look. I, I shouldn't say don't. I should just say it's, it's a, it's going to be very, um, like I would use it for a kid's room, you know, that kind of thing. It's it's going to be a very like, um, uh, not childish, but I don't know, vibrant color combination. So if you want something that's really like in your face, use the opposite colors on the color wheel. If you want something that's a little bit more soothing, a little bit more pleasing, a little bit more um, um, mature, then um, use colors. You can still use those two colors, but use one of them a little bit lighter than the other. So you could use like a really deep, dark purple, maybe not like straight out of the tube purple, but maybe like a purple that's got a little bit of red mixed in with it or, or a little bit of brown or black mixed in with it. So it's like a deeper color. And then your yellow, use like a really light buttery yellow or something that's um, not straight yellow out of the tube. So if you kind of mix them both and alter them just a little bit and um, make them a little bit more muted, they're going to go better together and they're just going to look a little bit more natural. So that's what I would, I would suggest, you know, if you're going to change your colors, just kind of keep that in mind. And, and, you know, if you use a super vibrant and you can use the, you know, a super vibrant, vibrant red, say, then, um, you know, do one of your mugs in that color. Then um, you could do another one that's like a green or something like that, that you know is going to look good together because it's, you know, opposite on the color wheel. But you could 
use a, a green that's a much more muted green. So like a minty green or something that's, you know, a sage green or something. And, the, and you see that in decorating too. And one thing I would say, if you have a really hard time with um, mixing colors or knowing what colors look together, look good together, then go to your like hardware store and pick up a color swatch. You know how they have those like decorating color swatches where they'll have like four colors together and they're all a little bit different, but you know that they look good together, then use those. So like use that and find one that you really like and then use that in your um, thing or or like find a fabric that's got colors in it that you really like and match match your paintings up to that um, and you don't have to like match your art they always say don't match your art to your decorating but um, if you're if you're you know wanting to do that deliberately then that's a way to go okay mixing another little little bit lighter white and I'm going to use this very sparingly just and very I'm really just kind of like dusting it on I'm not I, I honestly put it on a little bit thick right there I'm just going to go over it a little bit but um just another layer of white here, just a little bit lighter, and just add it in a few places. So I know we're, it's good to talk about mm -hmm. other things while we're doing the same thing over and over again here. <laughs> I, I agree. Just, no. And I'm just changing up my brush strokes. So, you know, just kind of going back and forth, not, not same, 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 you know. And that's a look too, you know, it's up to you how you want to do it. But I'm just kind of going back and forth, changing the direction and kind of blending it out as I go. So what were you going to say? Sorry. Oh, I was just going to be witty and say, you know, what, do they have a, uh, a similar wheel for personalities? So you can see what people go peop <laughs> compliment each other. And be helpful for guest lists. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Party. <laughs> okay. Well, they do that with employees a lot. You now, when Nathan went to work for Walmart, they one of the first things they had him do is take a big personality mm -hmm. test. I'm sure just yeah, kind of get yeah. an idea of how well, he'd work he work in his team. Well, you know, just kind of, I guess, give their bosses a head up heads up for that's a real psycho exactly <laughs> you're gonna have problems with this one bob <laughs> sorry nathan we're joking <laughs> but we know who your parents are so yeah yeah exactly you can't be that normal <laughs> yeah, just Going back in here, I've kind of pretty much covered up all my dark gray here. Okay, there we go. So there's our background. I really like this. I think it's pretty. And it'll dry a little bit dar darker, so we may decide that we want to go in with even more white once it's fully dry. Um, but but not, for now, I like it. But so. not super bright in your face white. Right. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome. No. All right, I'm going to use this gray. Oh, I just realized I'm looking at my reference photo in like about this little bit because I'm looking at it on the on the monitor where I'm painting right next to you, what you're seeing instead of having it big on my monitor here. I'm going <laughs> to open that up. That'll be a lot easier to see what I'm doing. <laughs> Got to do that. <laughs> just never, just got going and just didn't even notice. Okay, so I'm using the three eighths inch angle shader now, and we're going to use this color on the inside of our blue mug that's up here. And this is the same color that we use on our background. And if you don't want to have to draw, I have traceables available for what we're painting today on my Patreon page. It's $2 a month for unlimited downloads of all of the paintings that I do. So of the pretty free 
tutorials on YouTube. Tutorials, yes, on the YouTube ones. Yes, thank you for clarifying that. The bonus videos and challenge ones are have their own. Yeah, are part of those levels. Right. All right. So I'm just kind of filling this in solid here with that light gray. And let's go ahead and I'm going to add a little bit of this. Well, I'll wait and do the white one later. I'll just, I'm just going to keep this gray, um, this gray wet here. And that's why I mixed so much of it so that I'll be able to blend into it later. Um, okay. Yeah. Let's just leave that. And then I'm going to grab my Prussian blue and I'm pretty much, I think, going to just use the straight up Prussian blue for this mug. Yeah, I think that's about the right color right there. Good deal. I like it when a plan works. It'll be darker as we get going here. This is just the first coat. It's probably going to take a couple coats to get it as dark as we want it to be. But I'm just going to fill in my mug. I think I did, I think I did, if you want to know how to draw a mug, I think we went over it in that autumn tutorial that I did, did I? I think I did, right? Uh, the one that we did this fall? I can't remember. I, I know, remember. I know we did, I've done several coffee mug videos, so I'm sure, I know one of them I've probably gone over how to draw a mug. It's not, it's not terribly difficult. Okay, so somebody asked in chat mm -hmm. about your spray bottle. Okay. And so I was going to tell them, well, go to your uh, Amazon store right. to do it. It's in the favorite art supplies section. Yeah. And when I go and I check mm -hmm. today, it shows that it's currently unavailable. Okay. Uh-oh. Yeah, and it says you don't know if it'll be back in stock. So. Oh, no. Okay, I need to edit that. So for now, Find at least one. You, you can go and you can look at the spray bottle that she's using. And There's maybe, other ones that are very similar to right. that on, on Amazon. Yeah. Right. Find the fine spray, mister. It, it's, it's more used for hair, correct? Yes. Yeah, it was a hair. I got a little bit blue up there. I didn't want it. So anyways. Yeah, it's just a fine spray. It's a, yeah. It's pretty cool. I am making a mess here. I'm going fast and getting outside my lines there. Okay. Yeah, usually on Amazon, if you click on the item and then, you know, if it's not in stock, there should be like a little thing that says, show me similar items. And then it'll, you know, it'll show you something that's, you know, a lot of times people move their stores or change, you know, change the. Yeah, above, above the one that you have listed, there's like three other suggestions. Right, so. right. <clears throat> Those are just, probably the same type. It's just probably just a little bit different. Right. Just use the Amazon link down below. Go to the favorites. You'll see the little spray bottle. Click on that. And then you have options there. So, Yes. And I'll try to change it to one that's actually in stock. <laughs> Won't be the same exact brand probably, but oh, it'll be great. close enough. The, the key is the fine mist. That's, that's what keeps the, yeah, the it, it's just the, the heavy droplets, you know, from a regular spray bottle can be a little, uh, a little bit much. Right. Yep. It's pretty cool because you pull the, the handle in it, like. Is sprays a the whole thing a yeah, continuous, continuous spray mist yeah. in, in right. one pull so it's, it's exactly. not just like a right it does it so 
Yeah, it's a little bit softer and a little bit easier to control. And I can use it over the top of, like the other day we were doing a, a background on a large canvas and I was doing the sky and um, I got the first half of the sky done and the, the paint was starting to get a little bit tacky so I was able to spray it with that mister. Normally I would not spray it on top of wet paint but because the the droplets are so fine it doesn't it didn't um, it didn't cause any big wet splotches that you might get with a um, regular spray bottle. So I don't know why I'm selling these spray bottles. <laughs> Well, no, it's, it's, it's not that you're selling a spray bottle. Mm -hmm. It's, it's you know, if you go to a big box store or something and you buy one of those clear container, you know, handles that you use to spray a cleaner with and things like that, like you said, those those water droplets are rather large. Right. And, and it's, well. And it's I a, used those for years, so right. it's not like you can't use those. I've, right. I've used them. I, you know, used them on many, many times until I got this. I only have just recently bought this, but I do like it a lot better and I, that's why, you know, it's 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 a little bit more suited for what, what I need it for. All right, getting the white now. I got a little tiny bit of gray with it, but I'm just gonna go in here and while that white, that blue is still a little bit wet and I'm just gonna scrape through along that edge there. And I've got the quarter inch blender now the blender is just a stiff bristled fil filbert type brush. Um, it's kind of a hog bristle somewhat, like a synthetic hog bristle maybe. But the nice thing about it versus a real hog bristle is that it doesn't get soggy in water. So with a hog bristle brush, which is like those, you know, those white brushes that you can see that are really cheap. One, they shed terribly. So um, they are cheap. So, you know, no... No shade to the hog bristle brushes. I've used them and they work fine, but they do shed and they do get soggy in water. So if you get it wet, um, you might as well not try to scrub with it because it's not gonna do this. And these are actually a little bit more stiff bristled than the hog bristle brushes even are. So this one does a little bit better job of the scrubbing. And this is a new brush for me, I've been using it for, I don't know, the last four, three, four years now, probably four years, maybe, maybe longer. I don't know how long Princeton's been my brush sponsor, but they sent it to me when I was like, you know, well, these are the brushes that I know I use. And then these are, I don't know, you know, what else do you have that I might like? And they sent it to me um, just to try out. And oh my gosh, I love it. It's like been on my new on my list of, you know, must have brushes for a while now because you can do so many different things with it. And and I, honestly, I've only been using it to actually blend things <laughs> very recently, which doesn't make any sense because it's called Blender in the title. I know it takes me a while, but um, it actually does a really good job of blending. So I'm getting this gray that's down in here, even though this looks a lot darker, it's actually, it's going to dry a little bit darker than it looks. Maybe not this dark, but or maybe not this light, but I'm going to go right up to that lip of the white with this gray and just blend up into it. And that way it kind of blends out and adds that kind of light color right there towards the top of the mug. I do want it dark when it comes down into the mug though, so I do. I don't want it totally light right there. I do want a little bit of a separation. I'm mixing a little bit more of this gray. And then just wiping off my brush so I don't have a ton of paint on here so that I can control it. There we go. And it's starting to want to lift, so I'm gonna just put some color down and leave it because I'm scraping through that paint. It's wanting to lift off right in here because it was probably not fully dry when I went back over it. Okay. All right, let's keep on going with the white around the mug. I 
And this using this kind of stiffer bristle brush does a couple of things. One, it gives us a softer, it's easier to blend with, but it also gives me a soft edge. If I used a, um, well, like the brush that I, or the brush that I just used, you know, that angle brush, this handle is, is kind of a very obvious where it ends and the background begins. But if you want to soften things up a little bit, you can use this brush. And I really probably am going to go over and do my highlights and things with this just to kind of soften this edge up because I like the look of that kind of softer. Um, softer edge that this gives. Okay, getting a little bit brighter white now. This white is should be dry. So just going kind of in the middle here with the white, adding a highlight to that. You can see the difference right here where I've added the white and I haven't. So we're just gonna do it kind of mostly on this top front side here. And we'll probably add just a little bit back in here, but I need to let that dry a little bit more before I do it. Okay, there we go. So let's use a little bit of the Prussian blue with this brush. I'm gonna get a little bit of the white. And I'm going to use it on this handle here. Just go scratch across it for a little highlight. There and there. I'm pulling down a little bit. And leaving a little bit of a dark rim right here. There we go. Good. Let's get a little bit more of that, the, the Prussian blue, a little bit darker, so maybe just like a couple of shades lighter than there we go, somewhere in there we can get some glaze medium, glazing medium and I'm going to go along the edge here and scratch along that edge and I'm just I mean even just slightly going over it just a little bit, just to Soften up that edge. Blend it with that gray just light, lightly. Okay, and then before this dries, I need to blend this in. So I'm going to wipe my brush off so I don't have anything left in it and just pull that color over. And then I'm going to grab some of my Prussian blue that's on this side, right? Start it over here. And then push it into my light color. See that too much. I'm gonna get a little bit more of the lighter color. Just add a little bit more of it. There we go. It's pretty. It's pretty subtle. It's, this is pretty far back here. There's not a lot of a lot of uh, obvious highlights back here. Um, and then I'm gonna go just inside this, leaving a little bit of a rim right here. And this line should kind of go all the way down to the bottom of the mug. So somewhere like that. And I'm just gonna kind of scratch it out. Put the lightest color where you want it the brightest. And then whatever's left in your brush, just kind of pull it towards the middle a little bit. I'm gonna get a little bit more of that light color and do it again. And this time just kind of dry brush it. All right, I'm going to blend in this just a little bit around the edges. Soften that up. I just don't like how harsh that looks. There we go. And then there's a little bit of a highlight right here. It's not quite as bright as on the top. And then I'm going to get the dark Prussian blue. And I'm just going to make sure that this part down here it's dark. I need to wipe my brush clean though because I still had too much of that light color in there. So 
get that dark, dark Prussian blue. Press my brush flat so that it's staying pretty, pretty far and I'm close to in line. What? Can you mix a Prussian blue? Yes, I did. Did you tell us that at the beginning? In the beginning, yes. That's what I thought. Yes, it did. Thanks. No, it's okay. No, 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 no. I was going to thank the person in chat who asked a question, made me look silly. No. Oh, it's fine. (laughs) It's fine. It's, no, I can, it's basically, it's just ultramarine blue and black and maybe a little bit of purple. Right. And you said that the different brands will have different tones and tints just because they're not. Exactly makes the same way. Yeah. Here's Prussian blue. There's a three that I have. Liquitex is like a little bit uh, brighter. Golden is a little bit deeper. And then Matisse has a little bit more of a, a greenish tone to it. So they're all a little bit different. Um, you can use phthalo blue and, and doxazine purple with it instead of ultramarine blue. Just, you know, basically it's just a really, really dark navy blue. So basically you just need a little bit of black. Um, and a blue, and if you want it to have a little bit of a purple leaning, you can add some purple too. But it's up to you, however you want to do it. And then s- somebody wants... This is actually a little bit brighter even than I'm, you know, I'm looking at that. It's it's a little bit darker. So I might even go back in and darken this up, but what were you saying? And somebody would like to know, have you used... Anthraquinone blue. I have. I did a video a couple of years ago that I used it. At, not a couple. It's probably been four, four, no, longer than that. Um, and they just saw that color in your chart. Yes. Um, it It's a great, it's a, like a really nice bright, bright blue. And it's some of the, for a while there, Golden had it in their, um, in their mixes, like when, you know, you'd buy a, a color mixing um, set, it ha- it was in some of those sets. It might still be in some of the sets uh, for the liquid paints, the fluid paints. But, um, yeah, it it's great. Oh, I'll show it again. And, and as you've said before, that... It's very similar to Prussian Blue. Yeah. It's, it's real close. And this is also... Um, these two use the same pigments, the endothrine and the anthraquinone. I'm not sure why they're called different, but they're similar. Because artists. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they can be used interchangeably, I think. And I may even add a little bit of black to this to darken it up a little bit because I kind of... But I don't know. I think it'll be fine being a little bit brighter blue. I don't mind that. Right. And, and as you said before, that during these tutorials, you try to stick with a a not limited color palette, but right. one that's not so extensive that people feel like they have to go out and buy 200 different paints. Exactly. You know, so yeah, there are some interesting colors out there that we could use, but we don't want people to have to go out and, you know, and and buy a new tube of paint to use one time. I own all of them. Well, that's you. It's okay for me to buy them, right? (laughs) As long as I can still buy them. I'm not saying that they can't buy them either. I'm just saying. Correct. We we just don't want people to feel like they have to go out and buy 40, 60, 100 paints if they don't have to. Right. You know, it's just like, it's just like a spice. Okay. You know, for us, you know, cook you know uh, a- asian food and you use that one spice one time a quarter teaspoon right, right and then the jar sits in your cupboard all right exactly for nothing else well and i use i use pure pigments so i use things like ultramarine blue and and um quinacridone magenta and the thalos uh thalo blues and um cadmium yellows and things that are vibrant bright um uh, single co- single color tones, so they're they're ones that you don't you can't mix, you know. And then there's a lot of other colors like sap green and different ones that I might pull out every now and then, but they are they are mixed colors. So just like cobalt teal, cobalt teal is a mixed color. You can uh, it's pre mixed, so I can mix this with phthalo blue and phthalo green and white. Uh, but I use it so often 
and I, I have it in my repertoire of colors because I do, like Mark said, you know, I use it so often that I can justify um, that, yes, it's probably a color that you would probably want to have in your toolbox if you paint, the, you know, if you're painting along with me. So that's kind of, yeah, like he said, I'm, I'm, I try to be cognizant of that and, but you can, you can use whatever colors you have. So if you have a different color palette, as long as you've got, I would say, get a magenta, quinacridone magenta. I don't, there's not another color that's like it. There's lots of yellows that are similar. There's lots of reds that are similar, but that's one color that you really can't do without. And I would say thalo blue and ultramarine blue are probably just the same. I would, ultramarine blue you can, is a little bit more mixable. If you have a, have thalo blue and quinacridone magenta, you can mix a blue that's similar to ultramarine blue. It may not be exactly the same, but similar, but thalo blue green shade is one that for sure I would, I would have. So having two blues, like one that's a little bit more purplish, like ultramarine blue, and one that's a little bit more green, like phthalo blue, green shade, those, and then a magenta, and then some sort of a deep orange color, either either cadmium orange or cadmium red light, or pyrrole orange, or something like that, that's going to be able to mix a deep orange plus, plus a deep red with the magenta, um, and then like a... Um, and then a, a bright yellow of some sort. And with those colors, you can mix just about anything. The end. Sorry. I'm <laughs> going over a lot of colors here. I have a color mixing video, though, about it. So, and. And you had a color chart here not too long ago, did you? Didn't you? The one I just showed? Well, no, I thought that you had a color chart something. I, um, we sent out the, the, um, template for the, the color template, chart that I just right. showed yeah. in my newsletter last week or the week before. Right. So, um, yeah, we, I'm going to wait and do all the coffees at the same time. So if you're like, that one doesn't have coffee, that's because I, I because I drink it all. <laughs> Mark may or may not have just bought like $300 worth of coffee. I'm just telling on him. Right wow. Now. Ouch. <laughs> I love it because you never do that. You never buy yourself stuff. So I was like so happy because that justifies me buying $300 worth of purses last month, which now that I don't go anywhere makes absolutely no sense because of COVID, but they were on sale and they were my favorite kind. So now I feel okay about You're it. You're prepared. I'm okay. Yeah. It's like I have, I have an excuse. Well, I knew Mark was going to buy himself coffee next month, so. <laughs> oh. It's an experiment. Good for you. Well, you know. Years it's going to last you like months, though. It's not like you're buying it, right, you know, for right. one month's use. Yeah. Years ago, you know, I tried the, the real expensive tequila because, you know, everybody's like, oh, you got to get the. The Patron. Top shelf tequila. Yeah, not, not Patreon, the Patron. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I splurged one time and, and got it, and I'm like, I, <laughs> I, I, I can't tell the difference between the cheap <laughs> stuff and that stuff. So the, the, the one time I bought it, so <laughs> I bought a, a, a some coffee that's more expensive than I've ever spent money on before just to see what all the... Rages mm -hmm. to see if you can tell a difference, right? And I'll probably go back to buying the. I don't know. The, I know uh, with my tea, I, I when you get a taste for the good stuff, you it's really hard to buy the cheap stuff after a while. Well, then I'm never retiring if if I've done it to myself. <laughs> That's I the kind of coffee you're gonna <laughs> have. You're gonna have a two hundred dollar <laughs> coffee habit every month. It's just mind-boggling. It's yeah, no, and that's not even the most expensive one you could. No, have it isn't. You could have gotten. All right. I don't know why how we got on this topic. Because you said there was no coffee. I, I, I told on you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. You ratted me out. 
I thought I loved it how you were like so guilty about it too when you told me. <laughs> I had and to I'm tell like, you. I didn't even tell you how much I spent on purses. I just bought them. <laughs> <laughs> And hid the receipt. No, I didn't. I don't. I don't do that. <laughs> you, you realize I paid the, the I, I bills, right? What? You realize I paid the bills, right? <laughs> okay, just so, <laughs> so you see all the receipts, anyways. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Okay, so I put the white down here, and now I've mixed up um, a little bit of this gray here with a little bit more blue. So I just want a little bit more of the blue flavor in here and I'm going to go along the bottom edge there that is not dark enough so I'm going to go a little bit more gray here I need it to be darker than my background or you're not going to be able to see it so go in a little bit there we go a little bit darker very close to the original color that we had going on but I'm going to go and do that and then it's going to kind of continue around the inside here and then I want to blend out this edge. I'm going to get some more white here. Bring it down. And honestly, you could switch to another brush. This one is a little bit difficult to get a crisp line on, but I actually don't want a super crisp line, so that's why I'm continuing to use this. But if you wanted it a little cleaner um, edge, you could just use a, an angle brush. And then instead of using this brush on this part, use a round brush like a... Um, number two or number three round and that'll you know do this just whatever is the kind of width this number two would do fine <clears throat> it is leaving a little bit kind of a streakiness that I'm not like loving right here so I'm definitely going to need a couple of coats on here to smooth that out because I don't really want it to look scratched I just want the edges to be sort of blurred That's working. Okay, so it's there, and then there's a little bit of white right up here. And then there's this dark edge that comes around and follows all the way down here. And then the light color is on the inside. And this has got a little bit of that gray in it. So it's not fully, it's not as bright, at least not in this area here. Scraping and kind of stopping right in here and just kind of flicking, continuing that brush stroke so that I'm getting kind of a broken line right there. So when I, wherever I want it to stop, instead of pulling all the way to the edge where I want it to stop, let me do it on paper here. It'd be easier for you to see what I'm talking about. that we were practicing the other day. Okay, so these brush strokes that I'm doing with this brush, um, kind of like a dry brush, but say I've got an area um, that I want to shadow, right? And I want this area to be lighter than the, you know, this, this side to be darker. So I'm gonna go in here and when I approach that, edge instead of pulling all the way to there and lifting I'm going to flick it towards where I want it to blend out and that way I'm getting I'm not going all the way to this side and then lifting because that way it would go over the top of it I hope that makes sense mm -hmm. So that's the, I know I'm doing this quickly. I wanted to make sure that I'm clear what, what the motion is. It's not pulling and lifting. It's, it's pulling and flicking out. And of course on paper, it's pulling all of the moisture out of my brush. So it's not doing as well as it is on canvas, but hopefully you get the idea. <clears throat> All right, getting more of the white here and just spraying my canvas or my palette so that I'm keeping my paints moist. Getting, I want a fairly good amount of my white to be pretty 
fluid. So getting um, a little bit of white, pressing it flat on my palette will just help me control how much paint is in there. It also pushes that paint through the middle of the brush. So if I just loaded my brush through the paint like this, it kind of stays on the outside of the brush and it doesn't penetrate down in the middle. Um, so it you kind of run out of paint a little bit faster. Um, plus by having that paint all the way through, it's just, um, I can press that brush to a nice flat point which helps me control it a little bit too. So I'm leaving just a little bit of that dark edge here and I'm going it right along that edge there and adding more white and again just flicking it out towards I, where I want it to blend out. is dry now so I can add another coat. Okay. And if I did the background color right, this should be just slightly brighter than the background. So it's looking good. And then just leaving a little bit of this darker gray here. I'm going to get a little bit of that. And I'm just going to pull in this direction with that darker gray and blend over. Same exact brush stroke, just in the opposite direction over the top of the white this time. I'm just blending them together. And I'm going to get a little bit more and just go along this outside edge here. Blend that. Okay, there we go. And it's a little bit off right here, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about it. All right, I'm going to switch to a little bit bigger brush to do this part because this brush is just going to be a little bit too small. Okay, I don't know what I did with the cap. There it is. Oh, yeah, so let's get the larger size. This is the 3 8 inch blender. We'll use that for this part of the mug. Somebody asked, why were you using a stiff blender rather than a normal flat? Because I want a softer edge. So that's that's what this will give me. It just gives me a little bit softer blended. I, I wanted the mugs to be a little bit more out of focus kind of feeling, like a little bit more soft. So that's why I'm using the blender for these. But you, uh, if you want a harder line, you could use the angle brushes for it. Like if you want it, you know, these edges to be a little bit more firm, then just use a angle brush. I am gonna get actually my round brush here and get a little bit more of that gray. And I'm just gonna go over this just maybe a little bit of that light blue gray. A little bit. And this is going to have a shadow down here, so just making sure that this is darker, dark as I want it to be. I might darken it up even more, especially like right in this little area right here, get a little bit of this gray. And just like right here where it comes around, go a little bit darker with that. Wipe it out. And this is how you blend with this brush, you know, just what, what are you laughing at? Somebody said that Angela could paint with a pipe cleaner and it would still come out great. Oh, <laughs> challenge accepted. Chal you know, that, that would be an interesting challenge. I'm taking away all her brushes. <laughs> um, that's funny. We did have, I did have like a, a whole conversation going with two people in my uh, comments on YouTube, one of my videos. I can't, I don't remember which one it was, but it was really cute because they were like, somebody was saying, I, um, I put 
on your videos. I have a hard time falling asleep, so I put on your videos. helps me sleep. And somebody was else like, oh, I do that too. <laughs> <laughs> I sleep so well. I was like, I think I need to add that to my, like, so tags. Good you can sleep to it. So what? So good you can sleep to <laughs> it. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. So we need a poll. How many people watch Angela to fall asleep? <laughs> and how many people watch to learn to paint? Exactly. I just thought it was so cute. I love it. I need to add that to my uh, tags for my videos, like sleep aid. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it's highly addictive. What do you mean? Consult your physician. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. I need to put them on, I guess. I don't think it would work for me, though. <laughs> Would I put myself to sleep? <laughs> I need it sometimes. I woke up the other day. Okay, so we have had the worst luck lately. I swear. So I'm just adding my lighter highlight here to this rim. I'm using the number two round in the Velvet Touch. So it gives me a little more control. We've had the worst luck with our appliances lately. Okay, so last year... Our, which one was first? It was our so, water heater. So, so they, since September. They moved something. Well, and we, we noticed our water heater was was leaking. Right? Yes. So we had at the, the sometime in the pandemic, we ordered a, a freezer. Freezer. That's right. That's what it was. But it was, was back ordered in months and months and months. Right. So I went out to the garage when they finally said, okay, we're going to deliver it to mo open up some space to put it there. Yeah. So it was the summer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was uh, about August-ish. Right. Yeah. And then discovered the water heater was leaking. So then... So that got replaced. That got replaced. So then literally like maybe a month later, our air conditioner went out. Mm -hmm. So that got replaced. Then literally like maybe two weeks later, mm -hmm. three weeks later, our stove went out. Mm -hmm. And that had to be replaced. Mm -hmm. And now our refrigerator went out. <laughs> Oh my gosh! I think w the only thing left is like what the wash, the dishwasher, and the washer dryer. So, I'm I I guess we need to start saving up for them. I'm mm -hmm. probably gonna have to return my three purses that I bought <laughs> to I'm pay for this. I'm not returning the coffee. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Keep it. Um, that's more practical. Uh, anyhow, the uh, so. <laughs> What was my point of my story? I can't remember. I was I had a point. I said I was thinking I was thinking of something. So you were trying to say should you use your videos to fall asleep to? And it's because you woke up the other morning when I got up. Oh, that's right. I, yes. You know, I, I get up at four and I take yes. a shower and you know, because I go to work early. And so Angela got up and then she was come out <laughs> and she was just her mind was racing a mile a minute. And I'm like and I'm like, whoa, 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 slow down. Way too early for this. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, this is how my brain works. I woke up at four and was like, what if, because the, the, cause the refrigerator is at 45, the one we have now, which is too cold, too too warm for, it, for most for things. For dairy products. For dairy and products stuff. and stuff. So... I moved most everything out to the garage one, but the garage one I've been I've been suspecting is also not staying cold enough. So then I don't know. Just in the middle of the night, I'm like, and I just bought bought groceries the day be, that day that day before. So I'm just like, what if Oliver? What if what if the refrigerator's mm -hmm. not cold enough? What if what if we're gonna lose everything in the refrigerator? Well. I can't move everything to the other one because it's already full. So, and this, and this is all going on in my brain at, you know, four in the morning. Right. <sighs> and this couldn't have happened like the week before when it was like three so below next, zero. Right. We exactly. Could just put it outside. exactly. We could have just stuck it outside. It would have been fine. Mm -hmm. We've had like a warm snap this week. So, yeah, I'm going to, okay, adding more gray here. Please don't leave me notes about like not telling you what I'm painting because doing the same colors that I just did. So, Nothing new. Just doing a second coat here. Um, 
adding a little bit of white to my gray. I'm gonna just go in here and add some darker gray right here. Uh, so yeah, it just I don't know. Anyhow, so well, they, so maybe next time I'm having my mind going thoughts going everywhere. I'll have to find a video that I can put on to stop that because <laughs> I hate when I get like that. I hate it. It doesn't happen that often, but every now and then I can't turn it off. Mm -hmm. It's usually when something's going wrong and I'm trying to problem solve it four in the morning. <laughs> And so we got to make sure everything holds out for two more days because yes. the uh, refrigerator won't be delivered till Monday. I am so excited about it. I don't know. We had to get what it was in stock. Yeah. Because, the, you know, so the, the we brand, can't wait for it to be ordered. So we're not buying the brand that we had before because we've had no. problems with this refrigerator for a couple of years. Right. And we've been able to get it to where it is at today. And we've only had it for about 10 years. It yeah, should have I, lasted longer. Yeah, because I looked at the, the tag on the inside. It was manufactured in 2011. And the thing is, is the the frigid air that's out in our garage that it replaced is just going... The light bulb just went out. Yeah, it's we, going we've fine. We've had that refrigerator, what, 20 years? Uh, easily. Right, and so it's okay. going fantastic. I am adding white I'm and this gray. So this is the same gray that I've had. And I'm adding just a touch of this cobalt tur teal. And the reason is because it's reflecting from this mug. This white mug is right up next to it. If if it was the blue mug in front, I would be adding blue to this to reflect. So whatever white is next to, it pulls the color from. It's just like a mirror almost. It's very reflective. So it pulls the color from what's around it. So this is going to pull um, the gray and the teal. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm mixing a light teal. I want it to be pretty, pretty light. So I'm going to get a light version. I'm going to get a little bit more of the teal there and a little bit more of the gray and kind of do a medium color too because I want it. This probably, yeah, that'll probably be what I need. I might even need it darker. Let's do another layer that's even darker. So sorry, honey, you were talking about. I don't really need it. Well, okay, that's no, fine. It's, it's fine. It wasn't paint related. No. Yeah, so. So if you want to ask us about appliances, we have some <laughs> strong opinions. Yes. There's one brand. What brand not to get? There, <laughs> I will tell there's you. one brand that is a leader in smartphones, in Android smartphones. <laughs> they do a really good job on that, and they should stick to their lane. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and it may may or may not rhyme with lamb's rung. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. Mm -hmm. I didn't mention anything. Just, nope. you know. Nope. No. It's no, no harm. Even because. If we did. It's not like. Because we purchased refrigerator, dishwasher. Right. Microwave, washer, we wash, we dryer. We got the whole suite. And we've replaced about every one of them. Yep. Yeah. We have. So. Yep. We had problems with the microwave from day one. Mm -hmm. From day one. It was. Yeah, that was the first thing that we replaced. When we did the renovation, we were like, that's out, gone, and good riddance. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not I'm not sad that it's going. I mean, they look great. They look cool. Right. They're modern. They got a lot of, you know, bells and whistles and things like that. But when they work. When, when it comes down to doing what the main, you know, root function is, like clean a dish or... <laughs> Keep something cold. <laughs> Not so much. Eh. Yeah, but we got a touch screen. You can surf the internet on it. <laughs> yeah, but I want you to keep my milk cold. <laughs> well, just maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. Don't worry about it. So we got a fancy new one. 
that I'm really excited about. We paid way too much for it because it wasn't on sale. <sighs> Except for they did price match. Mark found it cheaper somewhere else, so we, mm -hmm. they did price match, thankfully. Got a little bit of a discount on it. But that's that's the problem. It's like, you know, you want to get it when it's on sale. You want to buy it when you want to buy it. Well, you want to, yeah. like, Black I want to plan for it and not have to buy what's in stock because that's <laughs> all that's available. And otherwise, we're going to lose everything in our refrigerator. Oh, well. So somebody asked for a close-up okay. on that. Is is this cup looking a little bit more fuzzy, scratchy, or because you're using a stiffer bristle brush? Mm -hmm. or, yeah. mm -hmm. So I just zoomed in a little bit on that. Yep. I added a little bit of this green just in here because I felt like it was just too different. Um, I may I may adjust this even like this outer, outer rim I feel like is too harsh. So I'm going to edit get to it. But a uh, little bit more light on the middle. This part is going to be your darkest right here and up on this side. I think our light's coming from this angle, maybe somewhat. It's kind of, it's really kind of splashing up off the, off of this light surface. So whenever you've got, you know, light surface underneath something too, you get a lot of reflected light from that too. So even though our light source is from over here, we're still getting all this bounce light coming back up and splashing on our, our mug over here. So, um, but there is a lot of like light down here. I'm going to use this kind of medium, medium color here. I don't want it to look too green. This may be slightly too green just because this mug looks kind of green now, but, and I don't want that to happen. So, um, I might have to gray it out a little bit more. Sorry. I'm getting the hiccups. <laughs> it's going to be hard to talk. Uh, so yeah, sorry. We, we uh, our appliance woes. Yeah. I I just had to get that off my chest. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but but all in all, totally somewhat related, but not really. You know, I found that you know, during the Black Friday sales here in the United States, you know, the day after Thanksgiving. Right for Christmas. You know, people usually are buying Christmas presents and things like that. But I found that if I think that I want to buy a tool or mm -hmm. a refrigerator, things like that That's through the, the time year, to do it. then wait. And because they have great sales on these other things that are not traditional Christmas gifts mm -hmm. and uh, you can get some really good deals then. So, Which we did not get on our new refrigerator. Not on the new one, but the one that that is replacing we did buy on a Black Friday sale. Right, right. And it was a killer deal. For it sure. was. Yep. It just needed to work. Um, oh, no. <clears throat> if somebody would like to know, do you know, and I don't think you do, why some of the velvet touch touch brushes are wood and some are plastic? Uh, no, I don't. That's mm. an interesting question. It may be... Um, I don't know. Don't know. It may be where they're ma manufactured. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's a good question. Um, I could ask. <laughs> <laughs> okay, more light color here. Get a little bit more bounce light right there. And I need to be careful not to scrub too hard because this is still wet right there. So I'm getting a little bit of that color, that lighter color that I'm mixing, blending it into, and just putting some of that down. All right, there we go. I don't know. I think right now it looks really green because there's, this green mug's not here, but I think once we get the green mug in here, this is not going to look as green. It's going to go a little bit more gray, but we'll see. We can always go back over it with a little bit more white or light gray. And I think up in here it's not as green as it is like right in this part right here. Get some of that gray. I'm going to go over this area right here. I'm just going to blend in that dark dark color that's there, it's too dark. 
because it's white, it's not a different color. And it is catching some light from what's around it, so. Well, so after the firestorm of questions about coffee, mm -hmm. thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, then there was, there's been a discussion on, uh, a, a light discussion on appliances, but now we've moved on to hiccup remedies. Oh, nice. So. I don't think I actually had them. I think I just had a, like a glitch in my. A glitch. I don't know. I, did you hit the reset actually, button? I did. I did. <laughs> I'm fine. I can come over there and tickle you. And when I get the you. hiccups bad, I it, I do I do have a pretty fail safe though. I just I have to plug my nose and hold my breath. If I do that, if I don't plug my nose, I it doesn't work. I guess if you don't breathe long enough, your hiccups will be gone. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But it doesn't work if I don't if I even if I don't take a breath. If I don't plug my nose, there's just I don't know if there's just like enough air escaping through my nose. It. It doesn't work. So when you're holding your breath, you're leaking? I am. I can't, it can't leak. It's got to hold the, got to have a really deep breath and it's got to hold that pressure against my diaphragm, you know, on the inside. And then, and then it'll go away. I love you so much. <laughs> Just saying. Somebody may need to know that. Learn all kinds of stuff in the show. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I just softened that up a little bit. It was just a little too harsh. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of this gray, and I'm going to go ahead and do over here this part with the gray instead of that green. I just don't really like the green being that far over. I think it's going to look better. So I'm just going to get a little gray, and this may be a little bit too dark, but we'll see. I'm going to just go over this with that gray. Get some white. Just trying to stay in my lines, but and honestly, don't mind. Um, go ahead and zoom in. You can see here what is happening with my out outside border. See how fuzzy it is. That's that's what I'm trying to achieve. So I want it to look fuzzy like that. Um, and like even along here and see how it's fuzzy on the inside here too. Um, that's what gives it that kind of soft look. Um, it just softens the whole thing. And if you do that everywhere, it, it the whole thing kind of just becomes a little bit um, softer. And the, the photograph that we're using is out of focus. So this one and this one were both very out of focus. This is the only one down here the, the third mugs in the front that was even slightly in focus. So um, this helps give that effect to, it kind of pushes these back visually, makes them a little softer overall. Um, in fact, I could probably even go a little bit more over the top of this with my gray um, if I wanted to blend that out. And I didn't, uh, when I, I did this one, I used um, this brush instead of this. And it, so that's why it looks harder. You know, the line looks a little harder. Um, so if I wanted to blend that out, I could go back over it, but I, it's fine. It's, it is what it is. So I'm not going to worry about it, but there we go. Okay. So, wow, we're already an hour and a half in and we're still, okay. Just talking, mm -hmm. we're just talking and painting here. Yep. All right. So this third one, I'm going to do a little bit brighter cobalt teal and phthalo green blue shade. The blue shade is just a little bit more bluish. If you don't have it, you just use thalo, blue, uh, thalo green yellow shade or thalo blue plus this, a little bit of yellow. Um, just basically making a bright and vibrant green here that's on the blue turquoise side. Very pretty. Alright, so I'm going to use that and just scrub in most of this mug with this. And then we'll add some highlights over the top of it once we get uh, it on.
And now we've run out of stories. All right. Huh? And now we've run out of stories. <laughs> Can I always talk about Fitz Pickle? <laughs> Getting more of the Prussian blue and some of this gray. Mixing that over here with this turquoise color. And I'm just going to go along right here. This paint's still wet, so it should mix. It's actually kind of lifting, though, right there. So I'm probably going to have to let this dry. That's, is that Fitzpickle barking? I think he's barking. Mm, it sounds they're, like they're him. Here. They're not? Okay. All right, I'm just going to use this down here because I. So this was trying to lift here, so that's why if I had kept painting on this, it would just would have lifted that or that green right off. So I didn't want it to do that. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more of the teal to this. I think it's looking a little too green. Add a little teal. Getting that. And I'm gonna switch brushes. I'm gonna get my smaller one for the handle. So are we putting this one in the beginner category? Mm, I would say probably no. not beginner, but no. not super hard. No, and I have another mug uh, set that is beginner. So it's, I think the main thing that makes this one more difficult is the overlapping here. Uh, so if you wanted to make it easier, you could, you know, move them apart. Just makes it a little trickier. Plus, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm putting in all the details. You don't have to put in all these little details that I'm putting in. You could, you know, you could just do the, the handle, uh, a solid color, and put in, you know, a little bit of a highlight and call it good. So I'm making it, you know, more realistic looking, but you don't have to do all the, all the details that I'm doing. And that will simplify it. And in the one that I did, the beginner one that I did, um, it's a pair of mugs. And they're very, very simplified. So definitely easier. All right, getting the cobalt teal, a little bit of white. While this is wet, I'm just going to Go over the, if you catch it while it's wet, it just makes it a little bit easier to do some of this blending. But you can see right here where it's trying to lift, so you need to be careful. Just drying pretty quick. I probably need, is the humidifier going? It's probably not. Um, yeah, it's not. Probably need it. Well, it's fine. It's, it's kind of late now. Fired up. Okay. There we go. Thank you. So the top part here, I'm doing a lot lighter than any of the other places that I've been painting there. Getting some of the medium green. Right in there, right where it kind of connects, it's darker right there. And then that darker green is along the outside of the rim. All the way around. And kind of 
on the inside here too. Okay, we'll let that dry. That's still feeling a little sticky, so I'm gonna let that dry really well before I do anything else to it. This is pretty bright, so I'm going in fairly thick with this. Touching a little bit of a bright white right there. And let's do the same thing right here. sure that this white I've already kind of done this once but I'll do it one more time let's make sure this white up here this one's done I think three times so it's pretty good I think you're gonna have to do over the top of these white areas a few times to get them as bright as they need to be and then just blending it out along that edge it's actually not like a hard edge right there it's kind of soft so keep your highlight kind of in the middle <laughs> you okay over there? <laughs> <laughs> Working in the yard today. <laughs> you alright? Huh? You can't sit down anymore. <laughs> I know it's not funny. <laughs> You'd think I'm like a professional sports player the way I'm crabbing <laughs> up over here, but I just did a little yard work. <laughs> it's been a while though. It's been all winter, right? <laughs> just about. You got a shape. Notice I was <laughs> not out there helping you. So <laughs> I may have noticed that. Scrubbing this first layer on in this area a little bit lighter so that that gray is kind of meeting the green. And then I'll go back over it with the brighter white in the middle part to brighten it up. So that way it'll have like a slight transition between the bright white and the gray.
it's kind of probably a little slower than it would be if I was using a traditional brush too. So that's probably why it's slowing me down a little because I'm really scrubbing instead of painting in a straight line. But I think I just, I like the effect that it's giving me better than if I was using a round brush. So I just have to excuse my slowness today. I don't know. We might be able to get it done in just over two hours, I think. Somewhere around there. I'm not concerned. Good. Okay. Alright, getting a little bit of that cobalt teal in my white here. of that I could also kind of put it in as a as a glaze and I that's why I put out the the zinc white which I don't know that I'm gonna actually use after all because I thought I might do these highlights with the zinc white but I'm ending up doing it with my brush this brush because just so that it kind of matches the same look so so if you're like why is she not using the zinc white this why I'm just Decided I don't think I want to use it stylistically. I like it. Okay, and then there is a let's go ahead and use it. We'll use the zinc white after all. We'll use it right in here. So right where this comes around, there's a little bit of a highlight right up underneath it, right here. I'm gonna get my turquoise teal. And then get my dark. If I have any dark color, there we go. And just blend out around it. Get that really dark green here. Use it real dark green, right? green and some gray. Use it right there. Come on. There we go. Just need a little bit more paint on my brush. This is that dark, really dark gray right here too. A little bit darker than the rest. And same thing here. Going up into that highlight, there's just a really dark gray right there. Okay, and then the inside of that just a little bit of this lighter green here. It's right there, make sure that this dark green kind of blends into it. These are small areas to blend and that's 
That's the um, what no- notches up the difficulty I find is when you've got you know small areas where the color changing is changing really quickly. Okay, getting a little bit of the white here, just putting it right on the inside of that handle. And then let's get a little bit more white again right here. Ooh, that's a lot of white. Okay, and then there's a little bit of the white right here. Right, kind of right along that edge coming down in front of the handle. And then this part here, I'm going to use my bigger brush. So I'm going to switch back over to my larger brush. This is the 3 8 inch blender again. And then this is where I, I can show you what it would look like with the zinc white. So here's a zinc white, and this is where I was thinking I might use it, right in here. So if you put your white on thin with the zinc white, you can see that green through. Works really great. So I'll do it over here on this side and then we can use the mixed color on this side and see which one we like better. So this one is with the titanium white with the with the green mixed into it. So it's it's going to be the same value as the one over here with the zinc white. We're seeing the green through this one and this one the green is mixed into it with the white. Makes sense. And I think both of them work pretty similar. You can see this one's a little bit whiter maybe, a little bit brighter, but if I wanted it a little bit brighter I could add more white to this one too. So I'm going to go ahead and go over this with a little bit of this color. There is a there's a dark area right here that goes down. I'm going to get the cobalt teal color with my green. I'm going to go right here. There is an area right there that's dark. this to blend in to the rest of this area here. I'm just blending a little bit over the top of that highlight color with the mug. This is that this color, the mug color might have a little bit of white in it. a little bit of glazing medium too. What that'll do is make it more transparent. So it'll be a little bit more subtle color change. So I'm going to add this to the middle part of my mug right here where I want it darker. And then add as I get around the sides here, I'm just going to kind of scrub out really lightly where I want it to blend into my light highlight areas. little bit of this darker color just right at the bottom here where it kind of turns under. Give it a little bit of a shadow right there. Okay. There we go. All 
All right, I'm gonna let these dry almost completely before I do the shadows underneath them. That way I won't accidentally mess up my mug. But I am gonna get a little bit more white. This is should be dry enough to go ahead and get a little bit more white here. And uh, don't need lift. No. It's wanting to lift, so I can't do much. That's too bright, but I can't really mess with it right now because it's wanting to lift. Where you know exactly when I'm gonna turn on side camera because then you like you immediately stop painting. It's like when cashmere, when I try to take a picture of her, she stops. Yep. Yep. What doing whatever cute thing she was doing. Mm -hmm. All right, getting the gray and the Prussian blue here. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of a dark darkness to the middle of that, get the glaze. It's got a little bit of the gray and just a little extra of the Prussian blue. And just right in here mostly. Let's really darken up that middle area there. There we go. All right. So let's go ahead and do our coffee. Let me get my littler brush again. So our coffee, hopefully our colors are still wet enough to use them. I'm gonna go ahead and scrape off a spot here. I'm using a glass palette. Get questions about it a lot. It's in my Amazon shop if you wanna check it out. The Posh New Wave glass palette. There you go. Not that I've been asked a few times about it. <laughs> In the one she's using, it's like a 16 by 12 or something. It's You don't see the whole It goes all the thing way Because the water yeah. can't on top of it. Yeah. It's covered by the, by the reference picture, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the reason I'm being careful with the little bits here that are left over is because they can get caught in your paint as you're mixing and cause issues. So I'm just clearing off all the little bits of paint. Okay. Alrighty. Let's do some coffee. I wish I liked coffee. I'm a tea drinker. Well, my friends and I go out for coffee sometimes. Everybody looks like they're enjoying it so much. They have all the fun mix, mixes that you can put in it and all that, but I cannot stand the taste. <laughs> well, why would you want to put anything in your coffee? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't drink it. 
I will put a creeper in during the holidays once in a while. But just ninety nine percent of the time the... straight up. Okay, so making this one was almost equal parts burnt sienna and yellow oxide. That'll be kind of our yellow based a cream you know, creamer coffee. And then our darker coffee is gonna be the burnt umber. I'm gonna add a little bit of the quinacridone burnt orange. That'll make it a little bit more of a cinnamony color, a little bit cinnamony brown. That's that I'm seeing down in this one. And then I've got kind of a in between here. So this has got a little bit of the burnt umber and a little bit of this color. All right, so I'm gonna just go ahead and start down here. I'm going to scrub it in kind of almost a circular motion. And we're going to be adding other colors over this too, so we can get a little bit of that lighter color. Mix that in while I've got it. Brush on my brush. I'm going right up to that heart, but I'm going to go ahead and do the cream part in a another color, so I'm just gonna, gonna do that separate. Just make that edge kind of fuzzy though. I think that's pretty close to where I want as far as color. cinnamony brown color. This one's probably a pumpkin spice latte or something. I'm just kind of stippling over the top of that darker color with the lighter color. some of the darker come down in between here kind of just mimics the heart shape all the way around here in the darker coffee too
Okay. Let's go ahead and use the unbleached titanium for the cream color. I'm going to add white to it. It's not fully beige, but close. I'm laying down a fairly good amount of paint because I'm going to have to cover this gray, so I want it to cover. But again, lay down the color where you want it the brightest. And then wipe my brush off and then kind of push it around to the edges. See, God, God knew what he was doing when he made you a tea lover and me a coffee lover. Why? Just so that we don't drink each other's stuff. Put, it, put ourselves out of the house with the expensive coffee drinking. My tea is probably just as expensive as your coffee, though. Maybe not. I don't know. The nice thing about the tea is that you can use the same tea leaves for two or three times before you have to change them out. I don't know about the coffee. Not so much, no. Not so much. And Spencer and I are the tea drinkers in our house. Spencer is my 19-year-old. And when he was two, Mark and I went on a trip to France, and I was just starting to drink tea. And so I thought it'd be fun to buy myself like a little tea teapot set when we were out there. So I brought it home, very carefully packed it in my luggage, it made it home safely so I had like these little teeny tiny cups and it was actually this color <laughs> I still have it somewhere and then the tea teapot you know a little tiny tea teapot that was just enough for like three cups you know three of the little mini cups and I, I had two teacups in the little teapot and uh, Spencer was two he was fascinated so whenever I would pull it out I would drink it and I'm like thinking you know he's not going to want to drink this because it's tea you know obviously and I had I had also bought um some good tea also to use in it you know so I had like loose leaf tea and it had a little strainer with it and uh I was n new to you know doing it so but I got a, I got a taste for it and realized I really liked the good teas. I'd only had like the really cheap Lipton stuff and I didn't really like it, but realized that it made a big difference to have the good stuff. So anyhow, long story, Spencer, Spencer at two years old started wanting to drink the tea with me. So he... And not the cheap tea. No. He, he, he quickly learned what I did was that there's a big difference with the teas because then I would, you know, try to give him the cheap teas. Oh no, he wanted the tea that mama was drinking. Yeah. So, so I mean, to put this in perspective, one of us brings their own tea bags out to restaurants and one of us does not bring their own coffee to restaurants. <laughs> Just saying. True. True. <laughs> if I want to have good tea, I have to bring it with me. Yes. Yes. That is true. You may have done that a few times. Every time. <laughs> no. <laughs> There's some places that have good tea. Not many. And even when the place thinks they have good tea, and they Angela don't. says no. No. And they look at her like, what? <laughs> no. Like, no, that's, that's not good. That's not good. Sorry, National Coffee Chain. No, that's not good tea. Uh -uh. S stick in your lane. Just stay there. Stick to your lane, yeah. <laughs> so what tea are you drinking right now? People would like to know. I am drinking a tea out of um, the 
Boulder Tea Company mm -hmm. called Blue Moon. I also got a, a tea from Haversham uh, called Paris. I think it's Haversham, Havers and Sons. I can't remember. I need to. I've only just bought it. Uh, in I have to go look. Look at the thing. I will say that when I was younger, we would drink tea with milk. You would drink tea with milk? Yes. I was raised by some parents that were brought up in the New Jersey, Massachusetts area. So right. I guess that's a English thing. Yeah, it is an English thing. thing. Mm -hmm. And so later in life, people... Like my wife may or may not have looked at me kind of strange. <laughs> like, what, what are you doing? Yeah. No, I know that that's a thing. I just, I don't like it that way. All right, adding the darker burnt sienna around the sides here. And this lighter kind of latte color added white, or added a little bit of this yellow to the to the white color from the cream for the outer area here. So just adding like a little rim of that all the way around. And then wipe this out, get that burnt umber. I'm going to scrub that burnt umber right along that edge. I'm finding that the burnt quinacridone burnt orange isn't quite the right color. So I think the burnt sienna and burnt umber together are probably fine. Maybe add just a little bit of it, but I think if you don't have the quinacridone burnt orange, you could just use the burnt umber and burnt sienna and just be fine. I don't think you have any teas in any of your your suggested shop online, like Amazon or anything um, like that, right? I might. I know I like I like Twinning's Prince of Wales teas. I think that's the only one that that you can get on Amazon right now. I think I don't think that the other ones are sold on Amazon. Although I could be could be wrong. The Boulder Blue Moon is by far my favorite, though. I have, I have that almost every day. It's uh, It's got blueberry and vanilla and lemon. And it's delicious. So shout out to the... Maybe they'll become a sponsor and send me free tea. Oh, that would be nice. I would, I would love that. I drink enough of it. I have to buy it in like the two pound bags. No, I think I got a five pound. Maybe, no. I can't remember. It was big. That'd be a lot of tea if it was five pounds. I don't think it was five pounds. I'm not good. You know that. I'm the one that bought 25 pounds of sugar <laughs> for when the. And how much have we gone through there? None. We None. haven't even opened it up yet. <laughs> We're still on the five pound bag that we. But we have it in case we need it. It's you never know. Yes, and Angela does admit that she is a tea snob. A hundred percent. And proud. I'm proud of it. It's about the only thing I'm well, I take that back. Well, as as we have grown older, we have We've grown expensive tastes in certain things. Right, but I've also learned that it's not necessarily quantity; it's quality. Right. You know, when you're younger, you're always like shoving as much pizza in your face as you can, or hamburgers, or whatever. And as you get older, you know, your your metabolism changes, and so now it's not the number of pieces of pizza, but it's the quality of the pizza. True. So it's you know. Look how red that is. That is red. 
Okay, so I'm going to add the burnt sienna with this quinacridone burnt orange here. I added a little bit of this yellow, but it didn't tone it down enough. <sighs> Get some burnt umber here. I kind of ran out of the cinnamon color, so I'm just mixing it up again. All right, there we go. Yeah, it's... It's, uh... getting older but yeah I'm sure I'm not we're not the only ones that experience that same thing mm -hmm. okay get more of the yellow here just realizing now that this is dry that I need more of the brighter yellow right in here so I'm gonna just scrub it in mostly around this white right here and go over it just slightly so it kind of blends it in Leading into the coffee a little bit. They're blending together. Well, we just appreciate you guys hanging out with us on a Saturday. I know there's all kinds of other things you could be doing, and we love that you guys take the time to stop in and chat with us live and or watch the replays, both, but you know. This one's a little bit past its prime as far as video subjects go because, you know, we missed the, missed the Valentine's Dale, but now we had enough requests for it to, that I felt like we should just go ahead and do it. But coffee. <laughs> enough said. Well, it's enough of a common subject that I feel like there's a lot of people that might want this for their kitchen or something. Getting that white and just going to blend it back over. Bleeding out those edges a little bit. Oh, I'm going to wipe that off. Get that white again. So this is Obviously, that first coat was very streaky, so I'm just going to do a second coat now. Get a little bit of that light, yeah, light on my brush so I'm just kind of scraping it a little bit into my coffee area here to create that highlight on the kitchen light so there's some areas here that are pretty pretty bright color that was in this area and I'm just going to tap and blend with that a little bit too much there I'm just wipe everything off and I just push it around Get a little bit more of that light color And then 
get my cinnamon brown here where it meets up with it and get that yellow and just blend the two together a little bit. Just go back and forth so if you get too much of the darker color get a little bit of the lighter and vice versa. I'm gonna tap in just like little little pockets of this darker color in here. Sounds like the puppy's back. Spencer's back with Fitz Pickle. Fitz Pickle's our dog. <laughs> if you are new to our channel, we talk about him a lot. He's a puppy, so we just got him last. When did we get him? I was trying to remember. What month it was that we got him? Was it July? <coughs> it was uh, after July 4th. It was August. It was August? Okay. <laughs> Actually, well, we went and we visited him on... The 18th of July. Okay. And we picked him up. Uh, let's see here. Just doing a second coat. This is all I'm doing. I'm just kind of adding a second coat on this. Covering it. We picked him up on August 1st. August 1st. Okay. Interesting. Oh, I remember well. Mark's freedom ended. Because <laughs> I took a selfie in front of the place where we picked him up that day. Like, well, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> He's okay. <laughs> He's a good dog. Mark didn't want a dog, but I gave him the sad, sad eyes for long enough. He <laughs> gave in finally. I think we're getting there. I'm going to press this flat, try to get some, a little bit more of the gold in the, the color here. And I'm going to pull down into my coffee there just a little bit. And then I'm going to cover it, but I want a little bit of that seeping down. And there is kind of a dark line that comes down there. Okay, and then I'm gonna, I still didn't do this side with the lighter color, so I'm gonna get a little, little bit of that lighter. lightly tap over that edge so that I've got a nice blended blended edge there. It should it should be a little bit light. I'm gonna get a little bit of this yellow 
color and mix it right here. This should be fairly light, right, where it blends off into the coffee color here, so. darkest dark and the light. There's just two dark areas and then in between there's kind of this medium color that's got some highlights and got some little little um, bubbles and things. So I'm just going to kind of use all these colors in different varying degrees. here goes fairly light so we get the lighter color here got a text a few weeks ago from Amazon saying, congratulations, Kathy, you won something. Mm -hmm. And then I got another one for Kathy a couple of weeks, and like a week or so ago. Mm -hmm. I just got one for Jerry. Ooh. But Jerry came in second. Uh oh. So I don't know if I should reply to this one too or not. <laughs> I hope you didn't reply to the other ones. No. <laughs> mm-hmm. I blocked the, the number, yeah, so, yeah. so this new number. <laughs> Gosh. Hey, congratulations. Just click this link. Right, yeah. Oh, I get those. I know. I don't know how they got our phone number, but we've got, I've been getting a lot of them lately. Mm -hmm. Drives me crazy. Delete, block this number, mm -hmm. check, done. You know what else I've been getting lately is a lot of, a lot of sponsor requests with weird like they'll say hey we're adidas and then you know like you know want to sponsor a video or something mm -hmm. but then like you know they sign it like hey call me on whatsapp <laughs> and they don't have any like logo official logos or official like you know emails or any you know at the end of an email a, like a legit email mm -hmm. You've got a whole list of like the phone number and the email and the you know the corporate name and the like the title of the person that's contacting you and all that stuff. None of that. None of that. Well, I it's like, all. I like the one bogus. you posted. Hmm? I like yeah, the one you posted last week. <laughs> <laughs> it was Jessica, and it was like some dude's picture. <laughs> it was to Jessica from Jessica, right? And a picture of this <laughs> this dude. And so Angela was confused if he was Jessica or, or she was Jessica. <laughs> My Jessica? <laughs> or is he? I don't know. But Either seemed, way, it looks legit. Yeah, I just it was definitely legit. was definitely going to go with his website, uh, you know, and like turn over all my account information to him. I'm like, oh my gosh, these spammers, they don't even try anymore. I was just getting lazy. Ooh, I got a notification that it's National Oreo Day. I did know. I was going to tell you. Darn it. I looked that up. To, I, I was looking up National Day of whatever, you know, like just to see what the National Days were. And I saw that. I was going to mention it. Shoot. Well, Slim Chickens reminded me. Okay, good. Good. I'm glad. Because I knew you would need to know that. And did you give me Oreos for, for the no, occasion? No, I didn't know until like an hour before the show. So it was too late. Some chickens. Do they have like some sort of special Oreo yeah, based they, something yeah, they dessert? Have a today? Dessert or a or a 
shake or something. I'm guessing. Nice. Let's see. All right, so now I'm going to go in with like a little highlighted yeah. color here. This is like the light yellow here with the white mixed in. I'm just going to tap in and add my little foamy bits. There are some like little like circles too that I'll probably add in later, but just for now I'm going to just tap in like a little little highlights in this area. Kind of do sort of circles with it. Some little highlights in my coffee. Get my yellow. going over what I just did and that's going to blend it in a little bit. Somebody would like to know, does it matter which order they paint the cups? Oh, I don't think so. Uh -uh. I would say though, um, it kind of helps when you're overlapping to do the back ones first. So that's why I did it in that order. Because then you're going over the top of what you've painted, you know. Otherwise, I would have to be real careful when I did that blue to not go over the top of this white. Which, you know, I was kind of being careful anyways when I put it in, but, you know, I could go over the top of it a little bit if, and it wasn't going to affect the outcome of the whole thing, you know. Adding these like rings here, they have these little uh, just kind of putting some lines in here that mimic that. a matter of kind of overlapping each layer. The layering is really what makes it special. So, I mean, you could do this all in one layer, but I think it's like the layering of all these different colors that really make it look a little bit more realistic. And, and all. just on I know sorry I'm 
Mark's like, daylight's a wasting. Yeah, I mean, we finally get sunny and, you know, 60 degree weather and you make me sit in here and stare at you for hours. <laughs> and it's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> seriously? Uh, you're abused, I know, sorry. Man, it is rough. <laughs> my job is so difficult. I love you, you're so... I love you. Good to hang out with me. Help me. Well, you're kind of likable. Oh, thank you. Know. you. I like hanging out with you, too. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Good. I have to say, this has been doing this together with you has been good for our relationship. I guess it could have gone either way, but <laughs> <laughs> it's been nice getting to spend a couple hours with you. Three or more <laughs> every uh, weekend and Tuesday nights. Just you and me time. It's almost like a date yeah. night in front of a few hundred people. A few hundred people. <laughs> almost not quite, but. <laughs> and without the food. True. Which so, note to self make it to make it better. Maybe we can do split screen. You can paint and I can cook or something. Or, or you can just eat. Or <laughs> Well, you do that already, so. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> okay. Just adding some highlights in here. I feel like I'm overdoing this thing. But there's some areas in here that are a little bit darker than what I have. I kind of lost my dark areas. And then there's these little bubbles in here that I want to have. Kind of blending out around it a little bit. You could use a round brush to kind of paint it in a little carefully, too. This, I'm going to use the really dark gray here with my burnt umber. Just make sure I have a really dark brown in this area. keep messing with it but go to the next one I know just no. go. okay just, well just hold on I need to finish it <laughs> I'm almost there <laughs> almost there I'm not loving it, so 
I'm gonna have to add some highlights to the bubbles and things here in a minute, but we'll just get the next one going here. Hopefully this one will go faster. Famous last words. Well, I got less colors in it, that's for sure. Okay, we're done on the next one. <laughs> Getting the yellow. Well, let's keep on going here. Got a little bit of yellow in my brush too. I really should have just painted this whole thing in with yellow oxide when I was doing the mugs and then that way I could have if I think I think if I did this over again um, paint paint in this area solid yellow oxide and on on these and then that way you've got that as a base to put in your coffee and I think that that would go faster than because I had to add so many layers to cover up that that gray so yellow oxide would be a better base color for that the inside of the mugs somebody would like to know how do you know when you have enough paint on your brush um well i usually load it in a way that i'm not i'm not putting too much I get, you get, kind of get in the habit of the way you load your brush you know and so sometimes you can kind of get into bad habits when you're doing that and load way too much or you know it depends on the kind of painting you're trying to do too because I mean I say way too much way too much for me for you know wanting to I I tend to be a more tight tightly um, controlled painter you know I don't have a lot of paint on my brush most of the time so um, when I load it if if you load it straight from here or like into the middle part, you 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 can't control how much is getting on your brush. So you're just dabbing here, and you've got all of this globbed on here. You can't control how much is on there. So by taking it over here to the palette and pressing it on both sides, then I know that I've offloaded the excess, and I've got only a certain amount of paint is clinging to my brush. And then that that's what I go with. So. And like I said, if you do it the same way every time, then you kind of have a feel for, you know, how much paint is going to be on your brush. And you won't tend to have too much. But a lot of people get in a hurry and they just dab in and, and go. And then they don't do this extra step here. And that's where you end up having too much paint on your brush. Which, like I said, that's a that's a that's a tech, that's a way of painting too. You know, I mean, it's not like I do it right and everything else is wrong. This is just the way I like to do it. So if you've got a different way of doing it, and that may be, you know, you may need to de develop that in your own, you know, style, and um, it may be totally good for you know the kind of style that you're painting. If you're wanting it to look exactly like mine, then you probably don't need to do it that way. But you know, if you want to kind of venture out and try your own style, then that's the way to do it, you know, is to kind of. And somebody wants to know, do you load all the brushes the same way? Um, yeah, depending on the kind of brush strokes I'm doing, but mostly, yeah, mostly. Uh, the uh, the same way but not necessarily the same kind of paint so sometimes I'll um, you know like a fan brush or a liner brush you need a paint, paint that's thinner so it depends on the brush somewhat okay getting the burnt umber and let me wipe this brush off so I don't have as much burnt umber and brown and burnt sienna my coffee color Use that back here. This this one's gonna go faster, I promise. I'm really not sure why this one took so long and it's still not quite where I want it to 
be. I'm going to paint over that because I don't like it. So this side has got some darker. And often you'll find that the darker, the, the side that's on the highlight, you know, you were saying the highlight, that um, these areas where it's getting, it's the light's blocked. So the light's hitting here, but this side is, getting, is in shadow. Um, it's gonna be darker along here. And then this side is open to the light. So it's gonna be catching the light on this side. So that's why that coffee is a little bit darker on this side than it is on this side over here. I don't know why it's all the way dark on this side. This one, this one doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what's happening on this one. <laughs> or maybe it's just darker coffee in this area, who knows, but. Okay. Anybody still watching? I know this is a long Saturday one. We got some people watching, of got course. Some people yeah. still. Okay, good. Thank you guys. Hanging out, chatting. Very good. I'm still here. You are. That's true. You're the most important one. Exactly. Even though I wasn't your first subscriber. No, that would be my son, Nathan. <laughs> Our son, I should say, not just mine. <laughs> I was going to say, jeez. <laughs> I think I was there. You were there. Okay. coffee color here yellow oxide this I'm this color is all dried up now and my white and I'm trying to kind of run it through in the direction that I'm seeing these streaks just so I have some of this color in my coffee before I start do my white over the top. Can I have to have that base color? And this one is definitely a lot lighter than overall than the other one. That's it, and I don't, I don't want to do over it right now because I want to let it dry. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of the latte color for this one here. Just a little bit of it showing in this mug.
third. Mm -hmm. right, and then I'm going to use it on here. I think I want the darker color. There's some glaze, like some of that coffee stuck to the inside of the rim the mug. darker. You can get the burnt sienna burnt umber color and go darker right here. And especially right where it comes down. Right there. And getting that white. working that wet edge right here to blend it in and this is dry brushing so it's just kind of using up what's left in my brush here scumbling it okay there we go soften up that inner part of the mug and then I'm gonna go back to the I need to dip all these brushes in to keep them wet. Gosh, I'm almost three hours. Mm -hmm. I thought it was gonna be two hours. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Well, you'll just owe me some overtime pay, that's all. Okay. That's extra kisses. I honestly thought this was I gonna be an easy-ish one. I think I had it scheduled for Tuesday. No, maybe not. It was a Saturday. It was a Saturday, yeah. okay, yeah. Because it's been postponed. Right, right. Okay, here we go. Going with white. white is kind of see-through because I'm doing it over the darker color so that's fine I can go back in and add a little bit more on top where I need it but
And if you want to, you can use a round brush for this. I'm tempted to switch. It's doing okay, though. It's, it's, it's just a little bit scrubby. Just trying to get the right, these should all flow into each other, so just make sure you're paying attention to the overall flow so that they all kind of overlap correctly. I'm going ahead and do this part so that I kind of get my, these parts correct. with my paint than I was before because I want to lay down with this white I want it to cover so all right so this is all going down in it's a little bit of that darker color kind of where they meet but it's actually fairly light so I'm gonna get a little bit of the light yellow there, can I add that? Are we doing okay? Yes, yes we are. Okay. Everything boilers. Heard you clicking, so making sure. Oh, that was the mouth clicking, not me. Uh -huh. I don't make sounds like that, I don't think. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, I do. Sorry. That was pretty good, actually. Thanks. That's impressive. Now you know what I do all day at work. I mean, wait a minute. <laughs> okay. Going kind of in between these and softening up the transitions a little bit. It's looking all right. Do the same thing to the other side here. Getting that lighter yellow here, I'm just kind of very close to the white, but it's just like that color that we did around the outside rim there.
know why I just did that, because that's not there. Using that burnt bird uh, or burnt sienna to kind of go around the edge there. All right, I like this one. So just leaving just a little bit of dark between these. Leave space in between them just a little bit. Barely touching down here, but I've got a fairly good amount of paint on my brush, and that way, that way, I don't have to press down too hard to get it to come off.
also just to remind everybody over there patreon.com slash angel fine art traceables bonus content fun for the whole family <laughs> the secrets to life no no we didn't have that level yet I don't I don't okay. know the right. sec- do you know the secrets <laughs> I thought it was painting oh, oh got it but anyways all kinds of good stuff over there check thanks and then over there thankfulart.com you can sign up mailing list for emails we don't mm-hmm. spam we just send out updates right and you can still get a free bonus video the duck mandarin duck is out that's there still. true yep mm-hmm. so check that out and that's kind of a sample of what you get over there on the patreon five dollar level Yeah, you have to sign up for the newsletter through the link that they... It's a pop-up link. That, yeah. So if you have your pop-up blocker on, you may have to turn it off to see that link. Because it has to... Yeah, you go to the Thinkful Art and wait a few seconds and the pop-up shows up. Right. Just putting a second coat on here, just adding a highlight. See what you're doing. Yeah, making the little which I could have done that and I might go back and kind of edit those just a little bit because I feel like they're a little bit messy, but I was trying to do this with just the bigger brush, but it just wasn't quite doing it. So I need to just use the smaller brush for some of these. Add a little Fire turning off. Mm-hmm. Right in the water. It's okay. I'm almost done. In the burnt umber here, kind of just making sure that they have like a little dark contrast. Usually like inside, but sometimes on the outside too. just dabbing in around it too because there's there's a bunch of highlights in here that I didn't actually put in I need to probably do them in blue but I'm gonna go ahead and add some highlights in this part just a little bit
darker color, making sure that I have a, like a darker outline on some of these little. This is what's going to make it look real. This is this last little bit. I know we're tired. Just come back to it if you don't want to do it in one setting. You don't have to do it like I do. looking oh, coffee bubbles and I'm getting the white maybe even think white let's get the sink white it'll be a little bit softer Highlight in my bubbles. Against the table, mm -hmm. just for clarification. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it did sound a little suspicious, didn't it? It did sound a little interesting. <laughs> a little farty. <laughs> okay. Getting closer. I'm not quite there yet, but I'm getting closer. Thinning out my white a little bit here. Using this brush is a little bit easier. Can give me a smoother line. mostly. And then I'm going to go around my coffee up here just a little bit with the burnt umber, burnt sienna, and yellow oxide.
So I, I secretly, I think that you're secretly a, a person who wants to drink coffee. I am. Because you've done several I coffee do, I do wish paintings. I liked coffee. I just don't. Okay, well, I'll let you try my no. good coffee. Uh, no. I don't even like the smell of it. That's the problem. It's like I just, I don't like it. I've tried it multiple different ways. And I just. Well, well, okay, we, I say okay. that. I've tried it twice. So, <laughs> and hated it both times. So, but I can't even take, I can't even do mocha. And I mean, I love chocolate. Well, I don't, so I don't I like mocha either. You don't? Okay, well. I like chocolate. I like coffee. I just don't, don't really like prefer together. chocolate with my coffee. Okay, well, going in here with the darker. Here. So we don't want your enemies to know, you know, in case they kidnap you and force you to drink coffee. Drink coffee. You know, talk or else we're going to make you drink coffee. Mm. So, no, she really likes coffee. Mm-hmm. Wink, wink. That's nice. Well, I just make sure I don't have any enemies. And <laughs> how's that? All right. <laughs> That'd be a weird thing for them to do. What would I be talking about? I don't know your secrets to how your paint doesn't dry out. <laughs> Tell us. That's what I was gonna or drink say. This like, coffee. what kind of secrets do I have? Do they think I have <laughs> the the you know voodoo magic you do on your paints okay. prior to the show? Don't give anybody any ideas. What? Mark's only talking about somebody kidnapping me so he can go do something else right now. <laughs> somebody please come get her. For the love of God, make her stop. <laughs> You're having dark thoughts over there, honey. Okay, I promise I'm I'm stopping soon. It's it's, it's really is fine, honestly. <laughs> I, I have no problem in sitting because I'm tired. <laughs> Yeah, but you want to play video games, I can tell. So we can get it. I'm not saying that a nice glass of wine in a video game wouldn't be nice, but <laughs> I'm okay with just sitting here too. So. <laughs> and which brush is that? This is the two round. Just kind of cleaning up some of these. I felt like it was a little too messy, messy, messy. Use a little bit of the yellow oxide with a little, little tiny bit of the yellow. The um, white, but not really. just to this area is got a highlight happening and it's just light shining on the coffee it's not actually the coffee being light right there just Black or 
brown, dark brown, and just pop a little dark contrast in some of those bubbles. Will you be adding shadows? <gasps> Thank you. Oh, dang it. I thought I was done. I'm not. Darn it. I'm glad they said that because I would have forgotten. All right, let me get the this angle brush here. Thankfully, I still have this, which is my color that I'm going to use. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to float it, and that, that'll go a lot faster. So I'm going to start with a clean brush, get a little glaze on it so it's glazed all the way through. And then I'm going to dip the tip of the brush into the dark, the, the dark color and blend back and forth. Just the tip. And I don't want it to go all the way through the brush. So I can see that it's kind of going all the way through. It's not too bad though. So I'm just going to wipe off the, get a little bit of water and wipe off that back end of the brush. That'll just take off the extra that's right there. And then I'm going to go right up next to my cup. And I want this really dark, so don't skimp on it. Yeah. I'm going to let that dry. Um, let's do this side. This side's really dark, too. This side is all the way in that corner, so I'm just going to pull this side down this way, and I'm going to pull it back this way, too. And just go across. And just fill in that space. And always keeping the always keeping the light area toward the outside where I don't want it to be dark. So keeping the dark tip toward the inside. And then I can just use my finger to kind of blend out. one down here is really dark so I'm going to get a little bit more on my brush and by starting at an angle almost close to the edge here then I don't get a line because if I start like this I'm going to have a straight line across so I start it up next to the cup like this I can, I can then pull it around. Makes sense. Just gonna quickly blend across, back and forth. And then I'm gonna pull it out a little bit over here. I don't have very much left in my brush now, so I'm able to kind of just mush it around a little bit and then over here I'm just gonna kind of just go back and forth because I don't want a hard line I want it to kind of blend out on both sides there we go let's do that over here pull that shadow for the handle out and just wiggling it back and forth there so that my shadow goes both ways keeping that dark part in the middle mm -hmm. I was trying to dry there okay and then this one is a lot more subtle so I saved it for last so that most of my paint was out bit of a shadow there and a little bit of a shadow here mm 
You can use this technique on your mug too. So if I wanted to use it on here, let's say I want to add a little bit darker shadow to the front edge of this mug, I can use this same technique and just kind of go back and forth this way. Still not 100% happy with that one. I'm not really sure what it is about it. I think maybe it just needs more white. Let's go ahead and get another layer of that white and add it to the this. Yeah, I think that's better. And then you can also use that technique to glaze. So if I want to add more of the cinnamon color, I see you know some of these areas where it's looking a little bit drab. I can grab that burnt sienna and quinacridone burnt orange. If you don't have quinacridone burnt orange, you could add a little bit of like magenta or a red or something to your color. It's just go over this and kind of tint mm -hmm. that a little bit so it's a little bit brighter. It helps also in these areas where we added the white because it kind of tints that white so that it's not so white. It looks more natural looking. Okay, I like that better. Um, that one back there, we can add a little bit more, maybe burnt umber, just using the tip of the brush with this color. We'll add a little bit darker shadow right here. And then you can do it with your light colors too. I'm just going to go ahead and grab a little bit of white here and just use it right there. All right, phew, that one kicked my booty. It took a while. I think I, I took way too long with the coffee on that one. Super chat, yay. I'm gonna put a little bit of this shadow on this mug too, so while you're doing that. Getting that same shadow color that's down here. I'm gonna add it to the mug. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I was just waiting for you to okay, pause there. Sorry. I don't want to ring while you were talking. Thank you. You're welcome. It is your show after all. <laughs> so we had a couple super chatters today. Really? Yes. Oh. oh very awesome. Yeah. Uh, from Nakia. And there was no special message on there, but I want to say thank you. She said you're welcome. Hopefully she's still here. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> thank you, Nakia. Maybe she hasn't fallen asleep. I don't I know. know. <laughs> and then also from Andrea, she says, just thanks for oh. everything. Thank you, Andrea. X and O. So thank you so much. We we'll really thank appreciate it. That is incredible. Very sweet. Now maybe I can talk Mark into eating out or something tonight. Don't have to cook. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> All righty. So I just added a, the shadow right here, right there, kind of where the two mugs kind of are almost touching. And then I added a shadow just below this one. That just helps kind of ground that mug so that, you know, it's got a little weight at the bottom there. I like how it turned out. It took for freaking ever, but I hopefully 
you guys can maybe simplify it more than I did. I don't know. I, uh, I thought this would be faster than it was, but so. I definitely like how it turned out. So that's what matters, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys, so much for hanging out with us today. We so appreciate you, and we will be back. I'm going to add a little highlight while I'm talking to that, to the inside of the, the coffee thing right there. Um, we will be back on Tuesday. We're going to be painting a landscape, so I'm looking forward to that. I think it'll be part of our beginner series. I'll definitely be faster than this one was. So <laughs> It will be under two hours. Yes. For sure. <laughs> There's a hard stop on Tuesdays. Yes. I do love how this turned out, though. It yeah. takes a while to get that realistic look, and that's kind of what I was going for. So, you know, it just, uh, I'm going to also, I didn't notice. Right but, here. you know, we hope that you like, subscribe, check out the 400 plus videos that she has on her channel, and everything from very simple beginner kids' levels all the way up to more advanced. Right. Patreon has bonus content where she goes into even more depth longer videos uh so if you can believe it yeah and, <laughs> and uh, so and then the links all down below for for t or sorry for spring <laughs> uh for etsy for amazon for the brush guys anything that you want to buy yeah click on down below all right thanks guys so much have a great rest of your weekend and we will see you next time